when I walk in the front door of your hospital, my first impression is created by the physical facility, the bricks and mortar. I have a very different impression if I walk in and I see carpet tile that's stained, ceiling tiles hanging down, than if I walk in and there is a beautiful granite floor, a fountain in the courtyard, paintings on the wall. That is my first impression, bricks and mortar. But that's not what will create my lasting impression, is it? If I'm a, a patient in your hospital for four or five days, and I come out and someone says, how was it? Should I have my care there? Am I going to say, oh yeah, you should see that beautiful carpet and the wallpaper. That's not what I'll talk about, is it? What I will talk about is what we at Values Coach call the invisible architecture. And just as if you're building a building, you start by laying out a foundation. That is your core values. That's the foundation of your invisible architecture. Core values define what you stand for, what you won't stand for. And like the old country song says, if you don't stand for something, you'll fall for anything. You build on that foundation, the superstructure of the building, and in the invisible architecture, that is corporate culture. It's the personality, it's the character of your organization. And then you come into your building, you finish it off with wallpaper, with carpeting. That is the emotional attitude of the workers in your workplace. And those things, your values, your culture, the emotional attitude, more than anything, more than the bricks and mortar, more than the technology, that defines how you make me feel. Now, you as a board member have a very specific responsibility when it comes to invisible architecture. It is not your job to go in and create a cultural blueprint or to tell people what they have to do. But there are some important responsibilities for governance that you should be thinking about. And I'd like to give you five specific questions. Question number one. By the way, all of these values, all of these questions relate to core values because that is really where your responsibility lies. And, and they're all interrelated, values, culture, the emotional attitude. Question number one, why did we choose the values we have and do people really buy into them? You know, so many hospitals have come up with some cute little acronym, I care, and then they force fit the words in. Oh yeah, let's see, integrity, that works, compassion, that works. And what happens, if that's your approach, what happens is people up on the floor or down in the basement start saying, why well, care? Um, it's okay to use a cute little acronym if and only if people make a personal emotional connection with those values and if they're expected to know what those values are and to know what it means in terms of their personal attitude and behaviors in the workplace. And you know, it is, it's appalling to me how often I'll be speaking with groups of hospital executives and I'll say, how many of you can tell me by memory, by heart, the values of your hospital. And typically in a room full of people, two out of ten will raise their hand. Um, if I were on the board of a hospital and asked the CEO, tell me the values of our hospital, and he or she didn't know, I'd wonder if we shouldn't get somebody else. Question number two, are our values operationally relevant? And here's a specific example. In healthcare, we are heading into the perfect storm when it comes to recruiting and retention. The next 10 years is going to make every previous staffing shortage look like nothing. When, as the baby boomers all start to retire, as women have more and more career options other than nursing, it's going to be more and more difficult for us to recruit and retain great people. And that raises the question, should your statement of values have something to say about loyalty? One of our biggest clients for many years was a Fortune 500 insurance company called Auto Owners Insurance. One of their 10 core values, which by the way, they expect every one of their 3,600 associates to know by heart, and they do. I've asked more than 400 of them randomly to tell me, and they do. And one of those 10 values is loyalty. Now it's not just a word up on the wall. They are very clear about what they mean by loyalty. First of all, as a company, they only promote from within. Every one of their senior officers started metaphorically in the mailroom. Uh, one, of their ten, one of their other ten values is creating opportunities for our associates. In their almost 100 year history, they've never had a layoff. So as a company, they know what it means to be loyal to our people. They also define loyalty as not being mere tenure, but as an associate in our company, we expect you to be loyal in return. So the question is, as a hospital, should be, you be thinking, should you elevate loyalty to the status of core value?
Next question, are your, value, are your values societally relevant? And another example, more and more we've been talking about the green movement in, in healthcare. Hospitals are a huge contributor to the landfill problem in this country. Now there are some organizations like SOS, Supplies Overseas based in Kentucky, that package uh, medical supplies and equipment destined for the landfill, repackage it and send it off to places like Haiti and Mali and other third world countries. That is taking stewardship and elevating it to the level of core value. So that's a question. Should you be looking at your core values and saying, huh, I wonder if stewardship ought to be something that we should see, not just as something we do, but at the level of core value. Question number four. How are our values reflected in the behavioral expectations of our people, in the attitudinal expectations of our people? And a, a specific example. I am quite certain that whether it's explicit or implicit, you hold integrity as a core value in your hospital. If I'm not right, you have another question to deal with, but I'm sure I am. I'm also quite certain that that value of integrity is violated each and every day in your hospital. I know that. How do I know that? Because your hospital, like every other hospital, has a rumor mill. And what does it say about your commitment to integrity if your culture tolerates two people talking about a coworker, talking about a patient who's not in the room? What does it say about your commitment to respect, dignity, compassion, all the other things we talk about if your culture tolerates gossip? If you were serious about integrity, you would have a cultural norm that says if two people start talking about a third person who's not in the room, someone gets on the phone, hey Joe, we're down in the cafeteria talking about you, come on down, we want to make sure you're a part of this conversation. And if that were your culture, within hours, gossip would be eradicated. The next two questions are more general, and, the, and number five is, do you use your values to inspire people? You know, one of the things that's, that's actually a bit appalling is how many healthcare executives are trying to quote unquote inspire people by telling them how bad things are going to be. Oh, we're going to have to do more with less. Healthcare reform is going to ruin everything. We're not, we're going to run out of money. Can you imagine Winston Churchill during the Blitz giving a, a speech like that? Oh, the Germans are coming. It's going to be really hard. Uh, we, we need to take things like courage and perseverance, vision, uh, remember our sense of purpose. Remember some of our history like Florence Nightingale at, at the Scutari Barrack Hospital in that most challenging of healthcare crises. And we need to inspire people. If we live our values, if we cultivate a, a culture of what I call contrarian toughness, we'll do just fine. We'll thrive during this, this healthcare crisis that's been, been going on for the last 200 years. One more thing, if you're on a hospital board, almost by definition, you are a leader in your community. And you should know what, it's a responsibility of being on the board to know what are the values of our hospital and to walk that talk yourself. If you're talking about integrity, if you're talking about loyalty or stewardship in the hospital but not practicing it out in the world, where people see you in the grocery store, at church or whatever, um, you're creating a sense of hypocrisy. And so, more than anything, your role as a member of the board is to set a positive example, to lead by example. You know, the most important values are values that unite us. And one thing we've seen over and over in the hospitals we work with, when people get clear about values, what shared values are, what that means in terms of how they treat each other, you can have a profound impact on the culture of the organization and that in turn has a profound impact on how you treat each other, how you treat patients, and ultimately uh, on the survivability and thriveability of your organization. The only sustainable source of competitive advantage lies in that invisible architecture of values, culture, and attitude. Everything else can be copied, everything else can be stolen, but nobody can duplicate your invisible architecture. And that is ultimately uh, your responsibility as a board, is to assure that, that your leadership team is creating that invisible architecture that assures the long-term thrivability of your organization.